Welcome everybody. I'm Tracy Dewar and I'm delighted to be here with everybody tonight. I am a certified holistic health coach and I am head of sales of Longevity Down Under. I love what I do. I do what I love and it's an absolute privilege and pleasure to be of service to you guys. Tonight on our Longevity Checkout Pet Health episode 12. Can you guys believe it? We've done 12 of these already. 12 very special guests. 12 very important people who have shared their expertise and experience with the Doc Wallach message. So I'm really super proud of these series and I just love the guests that I've had the opportunities to work with. This guest tonight has been an absolute joy. She has effervescence and energy like nobody else I've ever known. And she's actually 71 years old and you wouldn't even know it. You're going to look at her tonight and she is a teenager. <laughs> but she has fallen into Doc Wallach's hands and lap over 20 years ago, actually coming on 20 years ago in 2002. And she's got an amazing story and journey uh, to share with us today. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to the most beautiful Diane Shelley. <laughs> welcome, Diane. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Tracy, for inviting me on. Oh, thank you for just being such a wealth of knowledge and sharing so much of what you know and being a willing participant to get on this call. And before I pan this over to you, I just have to tell everybody, there is no excuse to say that um, I don't do Facebook, I don't do Zoom, because if this woman has been able to figure it out, anybody can do it. And she just does not give up. She's been persistent and she has persevered to be on this call tonight. She's a very first time a guest as a Zoom and we made it happen. Woo! <laughs> so, Finally. <laughs> yay. So Diane, thank, please tell thank, these beautiful people more stuff, more about you and how you fell into longevity. Okay. Well, um, in 2002, I uh, went to a meeting with uh, Dr. Joe Wallach when he first came to Australia. And um, I uh, decided immediately because I've, I'm a farm girl. Um, I still milk goats. I make all my own yogurt, uh, yogurt ice cream. Um, everything's made on the property. I do everything naturally and uh, for environmental reasons. So that's how I got into the dogs as well. Um, I had to try and work out why dogs were dying so young. And that's how I... Um, I ended up in uh, some pet shops and I've been talking to the public. So I learned a lot. Um, I've had a lot to do with goats. I've had, um, anyone wants to ask me about goats, I've had dairy goats for over 40 odd years. Um, people in the area get rid of goats because they can't keep them. Uh, they are a bit tricky, but you can keep them at a I guarantee. It's just what Dr. Wallach says. It's about the nutrition and the vitamins and minerals. And uh, with the animals, I'm a bit inclined to ad lib, which means put things out and I talk to the animal. They know more than we do. So I, um, um, I've hosted um, Dr. Wallet eventually as well. I was on stage with him and going from meeting to meeting. Uh, Dr. Schrauser came out as well. And um, I hosted him on the Central Coast at the Uni at Arimba. And... Um, I learned and was so interested in um, the supplementation because as a farm, in the farm area, that is the major thing that we use here. It is all about soil tests, um, testing to, for the minerals and how the uptake is so that we get, you know, certain products and particular in animals. Selenium, for argument's sake, which was uh, Dr. Wallach's and Dr. Schrauser's um, pet um, discovery, is here we actually give selenium to the cattle individually. They're always given selenium, and that's throughout Australia as far as I know. So um, it's so important to have uh, these nutrients uh, for the animals and ourselves, and um, it led me into highly interested in micronutrient nutrition and disease. So people talk to me all the time asking questions, and I try to answer them. And all I can do tonight is give you seeds and some information and you plant them. <laughs> well, we're going to do that for everybody. And so before we move forward, then like, tell us a little bit, you grandma, you got some kids. What do you do on a daily basis? Yeah, day? I've got six grandchildren, three children. Um, um, I've got a daughter overseas who's an athlete. Um, she's been a ski instructor and she's a sports injury massage therapist. Um, I'm a canine myofunctional therapist, which means I'm a dog um, massage therapist. Um, I did that 
in the early 2000s as well. Um, and that's when I worked out to, um, when I was talking to the public, to take the gluten out of the diet for the dogs. Uh, skin problems and all the different horrible things that were happening to the dogs. And by changing their diet and adding more product to the diet, um, people were coming back all over to talk to me. Um, I even had a, a, a blind gentleman come in with a seeing eye dog at one stage um, because people really are interested in their pet. They don't really know what to do. So trust yourself, trust your instinct and do some research. Mm, fantastic. Well, let's show these good people what we've put together today. Um, mm -hmm. But again, before just to really edify um, Diane here, Diane, as we said, is still climbing mountains. She's med free. She walks 5Ks a day. So this is following, like you said, the healthy lifestyle, the Doc Wallach mission and uh, implementing in your life. So you're definitely doing something right and that we can all aspire to look as good and feel as good as you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, we ready to share this screen with everybody? Let's get started. Oh, we gotta go. Give me one sec. Where that's the end of it. We want the beginning. Okay. So starting on our topic of pet health here tonight, we just really want to emphasize there are so many people out there that love their pets to death, literally, just to, just by, by giving them what they shouldn't be having, <laughs> um, and and all that. So loving your pets to death. Is everything okay? Yeah, we're just getting rid of a square. Okay. Ah, beauty. Okay, I can so, see it now. Thank so you. as I shared, Thank just you, a few just a few facts. Almost two-thirds of Australian households actually have a pet today. 90% of us have probably have had a pet at some point in time. And there are 29 million pets in Australia. That's an estimated population more than our 25 million in, 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 people. And actually $1 billion in sales in 2019 alone on actual healthcare products. So I don't know about you, but to me, that's talking about a huge opportunity and people are willing to spend the money on their pets, look after their pets and do a better job. They just don't know how. So Diane and I were talking today and she was sharing how there has been a huge decline in pet health, especially in the last 70 years that you've personally witnessed. Did you want to shed some light on that? Oh, the decline, uh, yes. I've um, um, When I was growing up, we had dogs, I had horses, we had goats, um, we had chickens. Um, I packed eggs in the chicken sheds um, and we definitely did not see the diseases that we're seeing today in the dog. Mm. Um, we, In actual fact, I was probably 14 when kibble came in. My father was absolutely over the moon kibble comes out of a packet so uh, he was delighted that he didn't have to feed you know all the things we were feeding before which was scraps off the table and I mean an egg and all this sort of thing um, so consequently um, he used to add different things to the kibble and then it's gone on from there and my dogs at the time I, um, I never did a lot of biscuit but then when I worked out the the um, gluten and what the gluten is actually doing to the, um, the gut. I've also done some certificate levels on uh, nutrition for humans and animals as well. And it's quite interesting to see that the absorption of the food that we're actually feeding today, even though there might be some minerals in there, um, it's not absorbing because of the gluten intolerance because it's slurfing off the villi in the gut. But the good news is you can replace it if you change the diet, just like Dr. Wallach is advising as well. I was delighted to hear him say the other day that if you get off the gluten, change your diet, it's exactly the same with the dog, um, that you can get some, you get repair from two weeks onwards. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, again, highlighting what we know the Doc Wallach <laughs> message, message is, um, he has a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture and he majored in animal husbandry and minored in field crops and soils and was awarded a doctorate in veterinary medicine. He's also a postdoctoral in biology of the natural system and a doctorate in natural medicine. Now that's just the baseline of what he's done, but his earlier work has key positions in leading zoos and universities. Um, he's also was the one who had discovered the first case of a non-human cystic fibrosis in a selenium deficiency in the monkeys. Um, he's done research 
um, a veterinarian in South Africa. Um, as we all know, he did the uh, Operation Rhino. He's cr done well over 70 scientific papers and 15 books, but the most, the famous one being the diseases of exotic animals, which happens to be in the Smithsonian's. We know he's the uh, famous author of Doctors um, Don't, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, but also the book Epigenics. Now you said some things about that, uh, Diane. Do you wanna just elaborate on the book that you feel everybody should be reading? Yes, well, I actually um, have been through the epigenics and um, it's a fabulous book. And um, even with viruses, now we've got viruses today, it's got a section there, it explains the history of the virus. And it's something that people should really have a look at. If you're really interested in, in nutrition and getting some results, it's a good idea to actually do some research um, and read the book and have a look what it's got to say. So, and that's what I do with everything. I always research everything um, and I'm, I love the book. It's just wonderful. Excellent, excellent. And so coming back to groundbreaking research on trace minerals. And as we all know, he is the doctor, the mineral doctor and the father of liquid mineral supplementation. So what he's had to say, and we all can relate and discover that pet diseases is now um, equal to actual human diseases. Isn't that ironic? And again, as he said, you know, pretty much anybody with a vertebrae is pretty much the same, um, I guess, diagnose symptoms and things that can go bad, but also things that go wrong. So I guess, did you want to go through this, Diane, just the things that you've shared with me We've of what are the most common um, issues that our pets have? Yes, I saw um, a lot of yeast infection, candida, ear infections, smelly ears, arthritis, uh, cataracts, uh, diarrhea and constipation, fleas and ticks. And remember, things that are crawly, like fleas and ticks, love sick, bo sick bodies. If they're healthy, I have two dogs at home and I don't have a flea, not a flea. Mm. Um, so everything's handled nutritionally. And I, at the end result, I've got an 11-year-old dog at the moment who's running around um, and somebody came in the other day and said, oh, how old is she? And I said, oh, she's 11. She said, but she hasn't got arthritis. So, and also I'd like to say to the, um, the minerals, uh, the Bloomin' Minerals, you can, I've purchased that as well and I've got that in the water. Now, what I do is I've got a number of bowls and the dogs come in and they drink out of different bowls. And I've noticed that they love the one with the, the minerals in it. Mm. Okay. So, um, and I actually, I had, I did, I was given the privilege of importing the um, first Arthrodex, which was called um, um, Joint Right. And there happens to be a little bit left in the bottom. So I, and it's fine. So I put it out for the dogs the other day and I've got a Marema who minds the goats. She's huge. So she sits down with the bowl in front of her and she just licked it to death. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> loved it now you're seeing you're seeing um diabetes today type 2 diabetes you're seeing um obesity and cancer i was seeing in the early 2000s leukemia in puppies under 12 months old and that was a transition and today it's even worse mm. and hip dysplasia hd um, i did organic foods in the markets for a few years to try and help people with um, food and organic foods and things like that um, so I have had a, a very cross um, experience uh, with the dog, uh, horses, goats, as I say, and um, it all comes back to um, the minerals. Now, the minerals aren't in the soil because I put mineral blocks out for my goats and they actually have a choice. So they go around from block to block and I notice they'll eat this one day and another day they'll eat something and then I still mix minerals. So I ad lib things and let them tell me what they need. Um, I did have a dog come in years ago when I was um, in, the, in the eye of the public and um, she was desperate. She couldn't, the dog wasn't eating. She'd just coming back from the vet and uh, the dog was very sad and they go into fasting. And uh, I suggested people are a bit frightened to change their food or try things. So I suggested she go and get a can of cat food <laughs> and uh, she rang me back and she said, oh, I feel so terrible. She said, it just scoffed it down. So it's, you don't feel guilty about changing whatever prescribed diet you're on. Ask your dog 
ask your cat, ask the horse. They will tell you what's mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. Very so. good. So let's move through then. Then what are some signs? Here are some of the signs uh, that your dog actually or pet may be ill. Yeah, bad breath, um, smelly, uh, bad teeth, appetite changes. They have weight loss, weight gain, um, excessive drinking and urination. Uh, diabetes obviously comes with some of these things. Stiffness, difficulties, sleeping um, and coughing, sneezing, dry, itchy skin, sores, lumps, shaking their heads. Usually that's an ear problem. Frequent digestive upsets and digestion is your priority. They must have digestion before they will actually absorb what we're feeding them. And that's why with the Athrodex, you've got the correct 90 essentials in there for this to happen and take up the actual minerals in the body. But you do have to change the diet. Exactly what Dr. Wallach's saying is get that gluten out of your dog's diet. Um, I have been asked before, and I did the proper research on it, you can feed rice, but do not feed white rice. It has to be brown rice, okay, because it's nutritionally deficient. So you can use, I came across a customer years ago who was feeding all this white rice, and she was wondering why the dog, dog was so sick. You can't just feed a dog rice. It needs a balanced diet. And what is a balanced diet? Mm. So those minerals, digestion, the minerals, and then vary the diet. And you're going to see a lot of different things out there. Um, don't give them eggs. My dogs get goat's milk, raw goat's milk. They get raw eggs. They get um, a little bit of cooked food, a little bit of raw food. Um, now, in the, the industry also, and I can back this up from a vet, when you've got a liver problem, you feed liver. If you've got a kidney problem, feed kidney. If you've got... Um, a heart problem, feed heart. Okay, now Lady Salento in the human industry many years ago, because I've researched all, uh, many old doctors, she was giving carrot juice and raw liver for cancer because she was helping the regeneration of the liver. So that was very early research from doctors and I've also got that in bed books as well. But people come to me now and say, oh, look, I've taken my dog off biscuits and I put it on meat uh, 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 because there's no minerals in meat okay you've mm -hmm. got to have a balanced diet and that means have something of everything mm -hmm. okay now you don't feed raw bone um, sorry not raw bones um, cook bones because they don't digest what about if no. you do the bone broth like you literally like I did I would put an entire chook in a slow cook and I would cook it for four, 24 hours and literally it would mush into, you know, like completely bone broth. And then I put the brown rice, sweet potato, turmeric, arthrodex and all that. And I managed to get a couple more good years out of, out of my little Reno. He just passed away two months ago after 16 and a half years. So it's a bit sad time. Um, but yeah, that's what I did. I actually would do the bone broth literally. Mm -hmm mushed it until it was just completely really mushy yeah yeah and, he, he, you know, and just... remember another thing too it's something that some people don't think about is with chicken today they're highly antibiotic mm. okay so in humans as well you've got to remember that even some of the seafood that's coming in imported particularly or grown is antibiotic mm -hmm. so it's you've got antibiotics in it so those antibiotics are transferring through our digestive system and the dog system as well. So that's why the, bio, uh, the flora and the enzymes and things are very, very important. Mm, excellent. All right. Well, let's just say what are some steps to start helping your pet? Well, first get a diagnosis. If anybody asks me anything about any animal or any human, I always want a diagnosis. Um, my husband uh, had two compressed discs. He wouldn't go and get a, um, a diagnosis. And I said, well, I'm not giving you anything until you do. <laughs> so three weeks later, he went and had an x-ray and he had two compressed discs and he's now walking around and hasn't had a problem since. Because my attitude, oh, you have to feed it. Your injury, feed it. But mm. you must get a diagnosis. And I always recommend the gluten eliminate the gluten because you will get better digestion if you've if, and the candida and the yeast and i see poor little maltese terriers that have got runny eyes and they're smelly and you know it's not going to go away with all that topical treatment it has to be from the inside out 
Mm, well done. All right. So then let's start with that then, starting with their gut health. Let's start. Let's go with that one. Okay. The leaky gut syndrome is when the villi is slurfing off, it's being destroyed, and that's caused by the gluten. The microbiome, you have to, you're looking at your enzymes and the flora, the gut flora. I even give gut flora to my goats. Um, we, I address it with ourselves in, at home um, and the dogs definitely um, get all of these things. The prebiotics and the probiotics are necessary as well to keep that um, gut fed and the good bacteria in there. Um, now, another thing to tell what the bad bacteria is, is the smell of the poo. And I can remember Dr. Wallach saying, um, when you left, left the bathroom, if the canary died, <laughs> <laughs> that used to be in one of his lectures. Um, yeah, well, poof. So that's bad bacteria, okay? And it's the same with the dog. I actually had my dog having a little fluff the other night and I thought, right, more bacteria. <laughs> so more enzymes. So she's, it's, you know, she's digesting obviously better now. Uh, but the yeast candida is very common in dogs. Um, some of those little woolly dogs, they sit down and chew their feet. That was one of my questions. Are they chewing their feet? And they get all the discolouring in the feet, especially Maltese and the white, white little white dogs. So that's your yeast and candida, and they definitely need all the ninety essentials, which you'll get in the uh, Arthrodex as well. Excellent, and, and and the pre and probiotic as well. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's see here. We'll move on. All right. And so, as you said, this is these are the products you literally recommend for the pets is the healthy digestion pack. And so, do you want to share how you might? Well, when I was um, with Dr. Wallach years ago, he's got a lot more products now and he's did a lot more packs and things together. But he did always say to me that they were designed and you can, and I heard him on a call just recently and um, it was about the buck if you can afford it, you know, you can feed some of the human things as well. But obviously it depends how big your dog is, of course. Um, some of the little dogs, um, you know, people might do it and maybe I do things for my dogs because vet bills are very expensive. So my attitude is I feed it in the diet and then I don't see vets. That's correct. So it, I, I had somebody call me the other day and, and um, you know, it's, it's getting so expensive. I don't think I could afford it. Um, so um, there's again, something... based on based on weight and stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. very much of it and it would last a very long time. If yes, it, yes. It would. But, but the fat. enzymes, but, I mean, if you do call... It, it, um, what I'm trying to do is give you some encouragement. Ask him some of the extra things if you've got a dog issue, you know. Um, I know the essential fatty acids, the enzymes and flora, um, and, and, you know, just see, get his opinion as well if you have um, got some issues. So yeah. otherwise, otherwise <laughs> our dog, dog formulated products is Arthrodex, which is uh, amazing and fantastic. And then moving on to what you recommend, the more homopathic and herbs for pets. Can you yes. I put on here? These are the, all the ones that you recommended as far as what mm -hmm. you use. And I just shared some of the actual good herbs that we have um, that can be used with the pets. So if you want to share more. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's a lot of professionals out there now doing homeopathics for animals. Uh, there's a lot of information out there on herbs for animals. Um, Echinacea, these are some of the ones that I've had that I've checked and made sure and used myself. I've even given echinacea to the goat. <laughs> um, but rose hips as high in vitamin C, dandelion, which is liver cleansing. The slippery elm now, that's a really beautiful product um, that you can get. I had a goat actually the other day that had a bit of a gut upset and you get a bit of loose stool because she was a bit greedy, I think, and ate too much grain. So I got the... Um, liquid minerals of Dr. Wallach's and I watered it into the slippery elm and then I just put that down her throat and the next morning the stool was fine because it actually helps the digestive system. Uh, the golden seal, chamomile tea, something like that's um, quite okay. But do your homework on it, do some research, um, find people that, you know, ask Dr. Wallach what he thinks and I'd suggest to open up a big scope for your animals. And, you know, Diane, when we did this together today and just to help me do the research and stuff, everything I, I followed up and researched and all these came up for pet health and, you know, uh, yep. the chamomile was even recommended as an essential oil. Um, yep. 
And so our GI cleanse that we have is the parasitic for helping remove parasites in people as well as pets. Um, and of course, our super all of health um, is just a fabulous one that has, you know, really helps with their immune system and building their strength and obviously the respiratory for the weep, wheezing dogs. Um, so again, going through it that you could do your research and just find what else your, the issue is with your pet and you can find what specifically a uh, product that you would need for them. So, so moving on to the aromatherapy. Um, I know your top three was the lavender, rosemary, and eucalyptus, uh, but we also have uh, in, in, in the research, these were other um, recommended uh, aromatherapy essential oils as well. So share what you do with that. Uh, the uh, lavender is a, a lovely calming oil. Um, you've got to remember with animals, um, these oils are systemic, which means they are absorbed through the skin. So if you're putting something on and you've got to remember that the animals lick themselves. So with the aromatherapy, it's usually used in a shampoo. Um, you'll get different recommendations. Like I looked at one today and it might say 20 drops in a litre of water. But if you're washing a very tiny little dog, it's not going to be quite so strong. I do your research on for what size dog that you're actually washing. Um, the eucalyptus and lavender is quite a good mixture for that. You can also make your own flea powder using um, um, corn flour. Uh, some people use uh, some of the, um, um, oh, there's a few other powders, but corn flour is a good one base. And you can put a, a few drops of the lavender and the eucalyptus on and just put, use, put a powder it on for fleas as well um, and some of the other products do your research on them and learn how to do it for your particular pet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you what did you say you use the rosemary for um fleas as well okay Sometimes you will find recipes that might say lavender rosemary eucalyptus and some of them say pennyroyal as well um, the pennyroyal is a little bit um some people say oh no you shouldn't use it but it depends on the situation. I actually also, diatomaceous earth you can get and put it around. If you, I've been on farms because on farms, the dogs get in certain areas and I've suggested that they put the diatomaceous earth there to get rid of the bedding or the dirt where they're lying and that helps get rid of them as well. I did that originally when I, when I started to make sure that I wanted them to have no fleas. Yeah, same. So that's what I did with that. Same. And I always use eucalyptus and a bit of lavender in the shampoos and, and it's, um, yeah, it's fine. And I know with the, the other ones, the clary sage that I shared, these are ones that are for anxious dogs. Um, there was just highly ones recommended as well as we have our calming spray. I meant to actually put a photo of our calming spray that we have for pets. Mm -hmm. um, and they happen to have the essential oils for help relaxing dogs with anxiety or resting and things like that. So so yeah, moving along, other supported things you can do for your pets. And this is where you come in, darling, being a canine massage therapist. So right. Tell us about that. Well, with massage therapy, um, I think one of the biggest things that I was asked is, is nervous dogs um, or I can't wash my dog. Um, but if you talk to your dog and start to massage the dog, you will be quite surprised. It relaxes and they love it. I had a woman give me a dog one day when I was doing massage and this, this Pomeranian, as I walked through the door, she handed it to me. And, um, and then she came back and she said, oh, did the dog bite you? And I said, no. <laughs> I, and I just was massaging that dog anyway, just while I was waiting for her. Um, and you would be surprised that the dogs love to be massaged. It calms them down. It relaxes them. Because if you're upset, the dog will be up, upset. Mm -hmm. So it's, massage is a, amazing to, um, to do with animals uh, and dogs particularly. Um, and also, because I've been around the horse industry, basically the um, uh, massage for the dog is um, a good situation because um, if you watch the dog walking, you will find that it may not be carrying itself properly. So it, if it's on a lead, it might be pulling and you'll find that their muscles in certain areas will be more developed than muscles in other areas. So they're not even. So if you run your hand down, run your hand down the back uh, vertebrae, et cetera. And it's quite amazing how you can see, 
I can look at the animals and see what muscles are developing and what needs to be just changing the way the animal moves. Brilliant. Brilliant. And tell us about this acupuncture. How does one... And acupuncture, people are doing acupuncture. Find an acupuncture, um, depending on what the situation is, um, because there's a lot of different problems out there for dogs now. Um, and I think you've got a great list of people that you can actually go and see who are actually doing uh, professionals in this area. Well, pet health has just become bigger and bigger, especially um, in the last two years of this pandemic more yes. and more people have been purchasing and buying pets than ever before um you know and like i said like 29 million pets so there's a lot out there they need the help and support don't no different than we do and as i said we love our pets the only problem with our pets is they don't live long enough and i am um sad to say had to say goodbye to my bestie and so i definitely know that people will do whatever it takes to look after their pets um and most of them not all and you know it's very sad that those situations happen but together with more of us educating people about pet health uh we can only get better and so that's what i have to say so Anybody on this call want to ask our gorgeous Diane any questions or share what they really got out of tonight or what they loved about what she done here tonight? Before, so I, before gonna... we go, I'd just yes. like to say colloidal silver. Okay. That is excellent. You can put in the eyes. Um, it's a fantastic because it's antibacterial and antivirus. And I use colloidal silver on a lot of things at our house. And ladies, with the colloidal silver, don't forget that you get bacteria and things on your face. I spray my skin with chloridal silver nearly daily. Mm, fantastic. And and look at how beautiful your face looks. So. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Anybody else want to uh, have any questions for Diane or want to say anything? Hi, Diane. Hello, Hi. Cheryl. I'm Cheryl from New Zealand. I live on a small organic farm, so lots of animals too. And I loved your talk. It was brilliant. Lots of great information. Thank you. Mm, well done, Cheryl. Hey, um, we've uh, got a, an, in our family an uh, Aussie exotic cat. It's got only about two years old and got serious limp in its hip. And he's been having arthrodex and um, minerals. But, you know, I just, I looked at your uh, massage thing and I'm just wondering what, any ideas what we can do for him? What what was the condition she's got? Um, it's a serious limp in his hip. I suspect he's been hit by a car or had some sort of accident because cats are amazing, you know. And oh, they are. Over the years, you have many cat stories about cat recoveries. Okay. Yeah. With, with the lump, when you touch it does it move which means it's not attached to bone or something so it's mobile he is hasn't it really got a lump but he's just got a serious kind of a um a limp oh right a limp okay okay so it's limping uh yeah well massage uh, acupuncture any of those sort of things would uh, you know you could seek seek that out and see what happens and, so, did he get a, and did they get a diagnosis? Well, you need a diagnosis. What I'd like to know, is it skeletal or is yes. it soft tissue? It's, um, that would be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, you know, ex you need a diagnosis to see exactly where it's coming from. Yeah. And so when we haven't got arthrodex in stock at the moment, what do you replace that with? Like we're Bloom and minerals. I put the bloom and minerals in the water. I actually yep. give them sometimes in the goat feed. I put them in there. And remember... Cats and dogs quite often eat all different things and they do eat dirt and lick, lick all sorts of things. Um, and I've actually um, noticed one of the dogs licking some of the dirt the other day and having a bit of a dig. And I, I just put some of the bloom and minerals in the food and I've got them in the water. And as I say, she'll, they'll go from one water to another water and they do love the one where the mineral's in. So I do I, no harm to do that for the cat. Right, the granular one, you mean? The yes, yeah, just the bloom and minerals. Yeah, I just bought a pack of that. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, I'll soak some. I know they drink out of the worm juice coming out of the worm farm. So it's yep. amazing what they choose. It is. Have. Yeah, it is. Animals are amazing. They know more than us. Yep, they it. sure do. Thank you so much. Well, I'm so happy that you two have connected because you're two of my favorite people. So well done. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent. One more, one more question or any feedback, anybody? 
I was just going to, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say that that was really fabulous and uh, very informative because um, I just got a sick cat at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's very informative. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Karen. And, and Karen's been in with longevity, like Karen's been in longevity, what, 18 years now, Karen? Actually, it'd be almost 19, 20 as well, right? 20, yeah. 20 years wow. as well. So you two were probably going to the same meetings at the same time when Doc was here. Probably not, because I was in New Zealand then. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wendy, you had something to say? Wendy? Oh, she's muted. I thought I heard a bump in there. Okay. Well, somebody was trying to say something. Well, I guess that's where we're at for tonight. So thank you so much, Diane. I can't wait to get this video out to everybody, the recording, and uh, you did a great job and I certainly appreciate everything that you are and you are doing. So keep up the great work and, and again, welcome back. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. Everybody have a wonderful night and thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye